and we've recently introduced our IVA Pro Suite, which is uh, specifically the type of AI is neural network based computer vision. So uh, what it allows us to do is not so much different analytics, uh, but where we can do analytics. Uh, much more complex scenes, and it's also much more scalable. So There's been a lot of talk about AI-driven hardware, right? And I think for the most part, people have seen and, and are used to Bosch IVA, EVA, what that brings to the table. Bosch is doing something new. And uh, so I wanted to kind of discuss with you a little bit on what that is, and if we can see a demo of, of the new product offering and the new enhancements. Yeah, absolutely. So the Bosch Legacy IVA that we've done for years, and it's still very relevant, is based on background subtraction. And we've recently introduced our IVA Pro Suite, which is uh, specifically the type of AI is neural network based computer vision. So uh, what it allows us to do is not so much different analytics, uh, but where we can do analytics. Uh, much more complex scenes, and it's also much more scalable, so easier to set up. So here you can see in this scene, a lot of simultaneous tra simultaneously tracked objects. Uh, we've had this over 74, I think 74 was where it peaked at the, the, the height of the show. Simultaneously tracked objects. Uh, it works in much the same way that IVA does, but like I said, works in environments that it just didn't previously. Okay, so I know there's some other things that uh, there's, there's these pro packs and we'll kind of get into that uh, here next, but I know there's some key things that we can kind of show here just by holding something up. Can we kind of rock through that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of the things we're really excited about is a sort of renaissance for pan tilt zoom cameras. Over the last few years in our industry, pan tilt zooms have fallen out of favor. Uh, instead, people are going to multi-imagers and panoramics because they don't have that nasty PTZ habit of being looking in the wrong direction. Uh, with this next generation of analytics, we're able to drive PTZs to the right relevant activity, and then because of these neural network-based detectors, uh, it, we can actually follow the activity without a human in the loop. So if I just reach down over here and grab this poster of a motorcycle and show it to the camera, we can illustrate how it tracks by object classification. Onto that, and then follow me throughout the booth. As long as that vehicle is present, uh, so not only can we uh, followed by classification, so only a specific type of thing, but notice the people in the background are still classified even as the camera is moving. So that's a first for pan tilt zooms and is going to allow us, uh, like I said, a, a sort of renaissance for PTZs because now we can get them pointed at the right thing, following things. Uh, we can also use white light spotlights, for example, as a huge deterrent factor. So imagine an intruder uh, trips a fixed camera, the PTZ turns, turns on a spotlight and is now following them through the parking lot or through the facility, uh, they usually leave. Yeah, and I think what was huge just about with that simple demo was how fast it recognized it and how quick it started tracking. Absolutely. So I know there's some other things you want to show me. I want to head over there now? Yeah, let's check right. it out. Here. Yeah, so now that we've talked a little bit about the basics of our neural network detectors, we can start to get into some of the things that we can do with them. So one thing that I think is important to note here at the show is that all of these demonstrations we're doing are live. So even though this video is a looping video, the camera is actually evaluating it in real time. It's pointed at the screen. So here you can see uh, some of the additional granular detectors, uh, cars, trucks, bus, uh, people, bikes, motorcycles, uh, all being detected in a, in a relatively flat shot. So historically, these kinds of field of view fields of view weren't conducive to good analytics. Uh, now the cameras are much less sensitive to fields of view and we can get accurate detections even in tough environments like this. There you can see a couple of bicycles as well that are instantly uh, detected and classified. It's also important to note that this requires no calibration now, so this also far more scalable. Uh, when I switch from one scene to the next, I don't have to change the calibration anymore because the camera understands people natively. So not only does it work much more accurately, but it's also easier to scale across broad things. As I mentioned in the last station, we can also do complex scenes. So this type of security checkpoint just simply was too complex for previous generation detectors and now we're able to. 
So the other thing I want to show you is this concept of automated response. So here, we've got a truck driving down the street. We've got a detector. And now our speaker is going to play to watch out for the truck. We've got another detection for jaywalkers. So we're driving automated response, things that used to require a human in the loop now can be done entirely by the system, device to device. The camera's telling the speaker what to do, might be telling the PTZ where to go, white light, all of these responses can be fully automated. Yeah, and I think a lot of the, there's so many mechanisms to this now and it's, it's enhanced and I think people really need to notice that even static objects are being detected. Where before, that wasn't always the case, right? So That's a tremendous differentiator, and uh, at our next station, we'll see that uh, used in real life. But uh, yeah, all of the background subtraction algorithms were always based on something happening, and sometimes what you want to know is what's not happening, like an empty parking space, little uh, teaser for the next station. All right, well, can't wait to see that. Let's head over there. You bet. All right, Brad, come check this out. All right, Matt, so we were just talking about static objects and how we can use that for parking spaces. So what do we got? Yeah, uh, so again, this is the ability to detect what's not happening, which is kind of a new development. So here this camera is live. You can see if I put my hand in front of it, it's there. It's looking at our little mocked up parking lot. So I do want to point out that it's still doing its job as a security camera. So in the background here in this, uh, this little uh, yellow Corvette is in our fire lane. And we can see that our fire lane is blocked. So if I drive this car out of the fire lane, will immediately get that notification that's no longer blocked or if it becomes blocked. That has nothing to do with the parking application. It's just doing its job as a security camera. But what it's also doing here is keeping track of these parking spots. So if we drive two vehicles into these spots, uh, it'll take five seconds for those vehicles to become static vehicles, indicating that they are indeed parked. There you can see that happen. And there you'll see the, uh, the dashboard update in real time. So we can use this to drive digital signage about how many spaces are available where, um, and also get information about the utilization of these spots. So if I park, uh, if I click on this spot, I can see that its current status is busy, that this was just updated a moment ago. The average parking duration is nine minutes uh, for this spot, and on average it was occupied 41.8% of the time. So this is going to allow me to potentially dynamically set pricing based on time of day, based, by, based on spot location, as well as make it more convenient for my customers or users to get in and out of this. So a great example of how a camera that we were likely going to put up either way is being used for multiple uh, functions in, a, uh, in its normal environment. All right. And what about on this side? Yeah, so this is just another example of where we can go with the video analytics that, that we've been showing you. So again, AI is not the end, it's the beginning. Uh, this is where we want to go with that. So in this case, uh, we're doing intelligent traffic. You can see an intersection that we're looking at and then data that's been coming from that intersection. Uh, one of the things that I'm most excited about with this kind of technology is the ability to bring smarts that are part of digital spaces to physical spaces. So in social media, for example, A-B testing is very common, where we'll send uh, a million users one colored button and a million other users another colored button. The users don't realize they're being experimented on, uh, but we really quickly, quickly get click data about which button works better. So imagine the same thing for physical spaces. Here, this intersection is likely duplicated in terms of traffic volume and layout several times throughout the city. And we want to test which light timing works better. All we need to do, the camera's going to be there anyway. It's going to collect data no matter what. We apply light timing A in one intersection, light timing B in the other, and just wait for the, the information about flow rate, accidents, et cetera, to come in on the cameras. And we can really quickly evaluate that information. Uh, very similar things in retail environments where we've got two stores with the same floor plan and we change the signage in one and we just wait for the information to come back in. So that's applying those lessons we've learned in digital spaces to actual physical spaces, utilizing cameras that we would have put up either way. Gotcha. I think, I think again, Bosch is going beyond the video and, and really bringing in some of, these, some of these enhancements that people can take advantage of to solve their, solve their issues and get, a, get away maybe from the traditional stuff and having to worry about calibration elements and stuff like that. I mean, now there are things in place to help solve that, move that along. So I really appreciate your time in showing us all this, Matt, and I hope you have a great show. You bet. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Bud.